Welcome, welcome back to another episode of Uploaded and Unfiltered, the podcast where I, your host, Jermaine, interviews another content creator in regards to their content journey thus far. Tonight, as always, I have a special guest, and before we get them introduced and on, I'm going to read their bio, and then we're going to start this awesome conversation. DJ is a chill, try-hard neighborhood variety streamer and YouTuber. He plays plenty of games on his channels, but leans towards single-player action and adventure games. His community are mostly chill over there, but things get wild and a bit toxic, but who doesn't love a little toxicity? Enjoy the good vibes over at Earth 313. And with that, I'd like to introduce my guest for the evening, DJ versus everybody. Thank you. Welcome to the stream. How are you doing today, sir? I am very well. Happy to be a part of this. Been listening to other episodes and just happy to continue, you know, this. That's awesome. I it's always I don't know why it's surprising when people tell me to listen, but uh, I appreciate that. Thank you. So, DJ, we're going to start this how we also before we get started, before we get into your origin story, I've been asking people this. And if like you said, you've been listening, you've, you've noticed I need to know what is the origin story of DJ versus everybody like I it kind of says what it is I at least I think it does but explain to the people what is your origin story of your name so the origin story of the name my nickname is DJ uh it's mm-hmm. based on my real name one just the first two of my uh initials so that's right. DJ versus everybody Detroit versus everybody a lot of cities kind of took that but the versus everybody part started in Detroit Okay, where I'm from. So I have a lot of pride in my city and where I'm from. We're slowly, Detroit slowly making a come up. And yeah, I just decided to just instead of Detroit versus everybody and DJ versus everybody, because I'm a competitor in a variety of things, not just video games, basketball, for sure. I like to compete. And I figured, you know, I'm from Detroit. It it just, everything makes sense. (laughs) Yeah, no, it makes sense. Like it, I like when a name is thought out and it's not just an auto generator. Like I need an Xbox name now. And you hit, these are the things I like go. No, this is something that is personal to you. And it has a story behind it. Cause I didn't realize it versus everybody started from Detroit. I did not know that. So I learned something new today. That's awesome. Yep. Cool, cool. So now, okay, we got that out the way. And you mentioned a few things right there in, in the ex- explanation of your name. So let's just get into it. What is the origin story of you creating content? How did you start? What's that look like? And and, and why did you why did you do it? So I would say we're gonna have to throw it all go all the way back. So my mom took me to her job, you know, one day and okay. You know, it was a normal office job, nine to five. And, you know, I'm nine, 10 years old. I don't really know anything about the workplace or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But I was so bored (laughs) that day. (laughs) And sounds about right. (laughs) And just seeing I couldn't do anything. I couldn't make noise, you know, and I hated school, but Mm -hmm. I'd rather be in school than just sit in an office all day, just watching her type on a computer and right. then, you know, get an hour of lunch. So, you know, fast forward to, you know, me graduating high school, you know, they always ask you, what do you want to do after high school? And it's just like, I mean, I'll go into computer science for college and all. So I go to Michigan State and, you know, I'm not really doing too well in my major. And I think it was around like 2014, like end of 2014, I kind of just hit that crossroads where it's just, I do not see, I do not think I would survive like strictly just working a nine to five for 60 years for a company that I don't like for a job, but I don't like working for other people right. and all. So uh, in 2014, I had a friend who introduced me to a person named Dashi dashy uh games on youtube i love dashy so you know that kind of got me through like some depressing times in college because i'm struggling Mm -hmm. with work and all struggling to (laughs) just keep myself happy so youtube was kind of like that escape point and dashy was that person that got me through those Mm -hmm. dark days 
that she started collaborating with other creators. And that's how I got introduced to like Corey Kenshin, who is also from Detroit and also went to Michigan State. So started watching Corey and Dashi and found myself watching every single one of their videos. They uploaded, you know, very consistently, almost on a daily basis. And, you know, I'm the, the my friend at the time um, kind of brought up the idea of like potentially doing YouTube. Mm -hmm. So I, I wasn't, I didn't see myself as a YouTuber. I always felt like I was going to be, uh, you know, just a watcher <laughs> of YouTube. But then da Dashi uploaded a video and he kind of showed like some of the equipment that he has, his basically a tour of his office and what technology right. he uses to upload gameplays. Because I always wondered, but I never really got into the nitty gritty. So that was like in 2015. So 2016, I switched my major to like communications and all. But it's just like, OK, let's see. Let me take a leap of faith. You know, I didn't see myself as like, you know, a person with personality. I mostly stay quiet. Like I play video games all the time, but let's just take a leap of faith. Um, so I checked out that YouTube video. I saw that he bought a capture card. So I bought an Elgato capture card in college and right. you know how expensive Elgato was. But it was the only capture card that I knew that, you know, actually made those. So the plan was <laughs> to get my friends at the time at my friend yeah, we're still friends now but get my friends to you know potentially make these type of videos with me because you know when when we're together playing video games it can make for a hilarious time mm -hmm. but i mean now that i know translating you know what you do in real life to like content is completely different but at the right. time you know we were aspiring to be like the next rdc world okay yeah so that was the idea that i had in mind but they weren't committed to the idea mm -hmm. so it was just like okay i'm gonna just have to take a leap of faith of my own so I started doing you know, youtube content and for four and a half years i was pretty much just trying to upload youtube content Get my personality. Uh, originally, I kind of imitated Dashy yeah. and Corey. Okay. And that didn't work out for me because I was <laughs> being someone I wasn't. Right. And, you know, Dashy is very loud. Mm -hmm. um, he's not as loud now, but back then he was definitely a loud personality. But mm -hmm. and that's just not me. Corey, you know, very expressive. And I can be expressive at times. But, again, that's not that's not me. Mm -hmm. So it took a minute to kind of just find myself within YouTube and then get comfortable, like talking, you know, by myself. Yes. Um, early YouTube videos. Definitely. There is a lot of gaps of silence um, in between it. But now I know how to, you know, be comfortable and, you know, get used to kind of just talking to myself. Right. And I think that eventually helped. Because of, believe it or not, um, the Wiz Gamma, that's how we met. We met originally oh, on YouTube. That's dope. Um, okay. There was a, you know, I would join these Facebook groups and, you know, it'd be like, oh, you know, we're all here to support each other and all oh, that. Yeah, yeah, no yeah. one really supported exactly. me. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I would be watching other people's content. No one's watching mine. Mm. You know, any chance of a collab happening, I, <laughs> I was left on red. Mm. So Wiz was like my first like YouTuber who like actually supported me right. and I've known, I think I've known her now for almost six years now. Oh, that's and, dope. Okay. So, you know, I would watch her content. We would, she would watch mine. And then in 2020, you know, during the pandemic, <laughs> yeah, that's when we collabed on our first video, met J. Keller, the demon. Okay. And then later that year, I actually met chicks and giggles mm, um, nice. through among us. Okay. True did Twitch. Mm -hmm. I didn't know Ja had a tw uh, Twitch at the time. Ja, I mostly was still collaborating with him uh, through YouTube, but mm -hmm. I didn't know Crew did Twitch. And it was Crew doing Twitch and kind of just lurking in her streams that kind of gave me the idea. Let, let me see what live streaming is all about. Because originally I was strongly against live streaming. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, same. Uh, I was definitely scared because it's one thing to, you know, record yourself because, you know, if you're quiet, you can take that out, edit right. that out. But live streaming, <laughs> there's no taking anything out. There's no yeah. second takes. There's no anything like that. Right. But, you know, 
that required me to take a, another leap of faith. Mm-hmm. So late 2020, I started on Twitch and Krug uh, definitely was helped me out with that because we also got Wiz to do Twitch nice. and now Wiz does nothing but Twitch. Right, exactly. <laughs> but eventually you kind of, you see like other creators of color mm-hmm. and shout out to Power Corey because Power Corey introduced me to Real Mama Ego who kind of then introduced me to a bunch of other creators of color. And it was just like, okay, I see this network of black creators. And then I was able to kind of get my name out there. People kind of knew how, who I was and yeah. that kind of brought me to where I am now. It took a minute to kind of get used to live streaming. Mm-hmm. I still have my shy moments. Um, people will always tell me that, but I definitely think I have a comfort level now with yeah. both streaming and uh, recording. Hell yeah, definitely. After so much, so many like trials and tribulations, time and doing it, you do definitely get comfortable and you develop your own style when it comes to streaming. Because mm. I thought I had to be one of those loud, obnoxious people when I was streaming too, and for the most part, I'm not. It depends on what game I'm playing. Um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, definitely the game. <laughs> yes. Oh, but you mentioned something, and I don't know if you did this on purpose. You started with going to the office with your mom. Did yes. that inform? Like, did, do you think that event was like, nah, fuck this, I cannot do that. <laughs> yeah, because it was just I. It it I was so bored, yeah. and it was just because I work from home now. Yeah, and. When I graduated college, I was working from, I used to go to an office. Um, right. My first two jobs were working in an office. And, mm-hmm. you know, I would complete my work <laughs> within like the first two hours. And then I, I have to like pretend to be busy just so that mm-hmm. they wouldn't give me more work or give me more stuff to do. And it's just like, I can't do this for 60 years. Like, I'm like, I don't know how my mom was able to. Yeah. It was it's, it's still able to do this, and she's mm-hmm. in her fifties. She's been working since her twenties, just going into an office, exactly working eight nine hours in in the office, and then just come home and it's just. Even if I never become full time, uh-huh. at least I after work I have something to look forward to. It's something exactly. I'm passionate about, yes. and I'm glad I developed this passion because mm-hmm. I just I could not <laughs> exactly I, I there was a job when i was doing the corporate office gig stuff i had a job it was cushy it would take me literally 45 minutes to finish my job mm-hmm. and then the rest of the day i didn't have anything to do and just like you i can't sit in the office and not do anything like i need mm-hmm. to be doing something so i eventually started using that time to make content i left that job went to something more challenging but to your point like I don't think not there are certain humans in this world who are not meant to sit in an office mm-hmm. nine to five and and do that brain dead work. And I'm glad that you find you found out that you are not one of those people and you, you're doing something about it. So I, I love that. That's awesome. Thank you. With that, we're just going to go ahead and jump right into the current mindset because I feel like I felt it. But now we're going to get it officially. What is your current mindset in regards to your content right now? So right now, I actually, about a month ago, I kind of just got back, um, came back to streaming. Okay. Um, December, I had to take a month off. Work does kind of get in the way still when it comes mm-hmm. to creating content. And sometimes work, you know, my job still pays the bills still. Yes. So I have to put some things secondary temporarily. Right. I completely stopped making YouTube content. And then I came back to Twitch about a month ago, been fairly consistent, just streaming about two days a week. And actually this past Saturday, I was able to finally record a YouTube video. Nice. My current mindset is to slowly and, you know, make the stream more interactive, add more Mm -hmm. channel point redemptions for the community to use, be more active in, uh, you know, discords, not just my discord, but, you know, other people's discords, their communities, just so that because that's just what I typically enjoy. Yeah. The goal is because 
we've had that busy point now mm-hmm. but as the year goes on it's going to get less busy for me for work wise yeah and i can't wait because then i can definitely start uploading again start streaming again start you know playing with people again yeah for sure Okay. So that's definitely the current mindset. I don't really have like goals in terms of like followers or subs or subscribers or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Obviously, everyone wants to grow and all, but it's to just be more being a pr- participant in uh, more communities. Yeah. Okay. No, I get that. I'm actually, that's one of my goals this year as well, too. Like, I have the time to be in people's streams and usually I'm in a lot of people's streams. I just don't say anything Mm -hmm. because like, and I'm making excuses and I'm going to say it. This is the last time I say it's excuse, (laughs) but I feel like when I start a conversation, I, if my kids come in the room and they need something, I'm out. Like it don't matter who I'm talking to. I'm like, I'm gone. And that's, Mm -hmm. everybody understands that, but I don't like doing it. Like Mm -hmm. I don't like, starting a conversation and then like two weeks later i'm like hey man remember that thing we're talking about (laughs) so uh, i need to figure out a better way to just start those conversations and being in discord because i have a love-hate relationship with discord but um (laughs) i'm working on it so i'm glad it's good to hear that other people are i'm not even gonna call it a struggle other people are working on those talents as well so that's dope okay then so dj lessons I know, I know you got at least one or two lessons that you've learned because you started creating content and I want to put you on the spot and ask you for at least one of them. <laughs> oh, most definitely. I think the most important lesson I've learned is I have to be myself. I, even when I started streaming and, you know, I developed that, that comfort level with YouTube with mm-hmm. just being myself. Yeah. But even on Twitch, I, I started off trying to be someone I wasn't Mm -hmm. and it didn't make me enjoy streaming. It wasn't until I want to say late 2021, beginning of 2022. That's when I kind of started being myself. And I think that's when the real growth for me started. That's awesome. So definitely that's the one lesson I've learned. I'm always just, always just be me. Um, Yeah. I think that's a lesson. Not everybody has to learn that lesson. Some people come out the gate and it's just them. But I definitely, I was, I don't know who I was trying to emulate, but I know that once I slipped back into me and like, no, this is what I like to do. And I don't have to put up that facade of, oh yeah, I care about that when I really don't like Mm -hmm. at this point is, you know what I like, you know what I don't like. And if you're not for it, then there's like 4,000 other streamers you can go check out. So most definitely. It's so much easier to be yourself. You don't have to. There's a lot of stress that is relieved with not having to worry about faking that shit. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Okay, then. Well, I am a new inspiring streamer. I watched (laughs) one of your YouTubes and found out you had a Twitch. And now I kind of want to do both as well. What would your advice be to that person? Or I just gave you a whole ass fake person. What would your advice be to anybody you want to give advice to? <laughs> My bad. <laughs> no, you're good. Um, I guess best advice is it's going to start off slow. You know, mm-hmm. unless you've already built yourself on another platform, no one's going to really watch your streams. Mm-hmm. And the best advice I've kind of had is actually maybe it's a good idea to stream less and network more you know, see, you know, who's out there, see, you know, who plays the same type of games that you do, see who is interested in the same topic as you. And don't, hey, I'm interested in the same topic, you know, let me, (laughs) let's, let's be friends, let's collab and all that. But, you know, get to genuinely know people. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, just get to genuinely know people. And then that's how you can eventually, you know, work through your content, build your community Mm -hmm. and then you know the growth it's better to always grow you know naturally in my opinion than to grow artificially i agree Um, that's the word of advice i would give to someone that's you know newer aspiring i 100 percent agree with the stream less and network more because even now like i think i stream two days three days if y'all are lucky but two days a week (laughs) 
<laughs> because I don't need to be on the camera every day to a maintain my community or grow the community. Because when those streams pop up, you know it cripples here from ten to two. That's it. So if you're coming through, come through. But to your point, the networking piece, like at first, and I'm gonna. This is for anybody who feels this. At first, I thought networking was. It, I just had a negative connotation with it. I don't know why. I'm gonna blame TV. <laughs> but <laughs> I had a negative connotation with it. But now I look at networking as like you, A, you're getting your face out there mm -hmm. and you have no idea who you're going to talk to. Just going to be like, I fuck with everything that you're doing right now. And I know five people that can benefit from this. And then that sets off. Hey, you got invited to like, I got I was, I did the wall now uh, show with Gamma. Was that last week? Yeah, I think that was yeah, last week. Yeah, it was last week. And the only reason that happened is because I met I met I, so I think crew is my entry into the uh only fans, uh <laughs> whole crew. But I just me and crew hit it off and then I went to her streams. I'm seeing people chat and I'm like, Oh, who's this game? I go check it out, boom, oh who's DJ? Oh and that's how you just everybody that they that they are interacting with are cool people so you naturally want to go see what they're talking about and go jump into the communities and and chat and that's it like i didn't like dm her like hey let me be on this show god damn right. it no it was just hey i think you'd be a good fit here yay all right cool <laughs> uh it was hard as shit but it was fun though. so <laughs> don't be afraid to network that's no it's not as hard as you think you'd be surprised how how you know just spending 15 minutes kind of just asking some questions and not, you know, making it seem like you're trying to steal people's <laughs> community members or viewers. Yeah. <laughs> just like spending 15, 20 minutes in a stream, just getting to know the person and you'll see how like how far it can get you. Yeah, exactly. I tell everybody, if you want to practice networking, come to my streams and just start just do what you would normally do. And like, I'm not the be all end all of tests for networking everybody <laughs> has different personalities but i'm not gonna shut you down immediately like because i want to genuinely have open conversations with people who are willing to have them not everybody wants to talk so you don't want to force that but just come try it it's fun with that i'm gonna make you do it I'll, well you you make youtube videos you should be used to doing this call to action I want you to give a call to action to get the people riled up to go see your content. You guys can find me on Twitter at DJ versus everybody uh, 13 on Instagram, DJ versus everybody 313 YouTube and Twitch and TikTok DJ versus everybody. No numbers after that. Been doing, uh, you know, content creation since about 2016. I, as I said, I play a variety of single player action adventure con content, but also I dabble into multiplayer content as well. Always welcome to check out a stream or a video. You know, we're open. As I said, things do get a bit toxic, but a little toxicity never hurt anyone. Thank you to Crip for allowing me to be on this podcast. And with that, I'd like to thank DJ for being my guest for the evening. Once again, I appreciate you and thank you for finding the time to do this. And as always, for you creators out there and anyone in life, protect your mental, keep creating content, and I'll talk to you on the next one. Peace. Thank you for listening this deep into the podcast. I truly do appreciate it. If you enjoy what you heard and you want to get this podcast to a state where I can actually make even more changes in creators' lives, please share the podcast with those that you know. They probably can get some enjoyment or some information from the podcast. Head over to upun.buzzsprout.com. That is U-P-U-N dot buzzsprout.com to check out where the podcast is hosted on that website there will be a variety of different places where you can actually subscribe to the podcast and if you do subscribe i would appreciate a rating and a review on whatever platform you listen to this on those ratings and those reviews help the podcast 
elevate into a higher level so I could become more discoverable in searches and things of that nature. Also, check out the website uploadedandunfiltered.com if you want to check out every guest that's been on the podcast as well as links to their content as well. Last but not least, if you want to financially support the podcast, you can do so at buymeacoffee.com slash uploaded and unfiltered. I set up a donation site there. All money that goes there will be directly poured back to the podcast to help for hosting and things of that nature. Again, thank you for listening. This has been a project that I have dreamed about building and it is here and we are doing it and I am nothing but excited for its future. Until then, I'll see y'all in the next one.